So welcome, you guys. Um, it's good to be back. I wasn't feeling well last week, so please excuse me. I wasn't here. Um, but I am so happy to be back and working with you guys. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chloe Bellatori. I am a relationship and communication expert. I'm a graduate of Princeton University and Pat Allen's Want Institute. She uh, was my mentor. She's mostly retired now, but you might know her. She's kind of famous. She's guested on a Millionaire Matchmaker because she also mentored Patty Stanger. She mentored Marianne Williamson. Um, so you might have heard of her work before. I use tools that I learned from her. She teaches something called androgynous semantic realignment, which sounds complicated, but we'll get into it. It's, it's, um, it's understandable. Um, I also use tools from TA transactional analysis as created by Eric Byrne. And I use tools that I've created myself because I've been doing this over 10 years now. Um, I'm also a user a client of this work myself so that's how I started I found this work um, many years ago when my marriage was in trouble when I was very unhappy and it changed my life and I saw incredible changes in the people around me as well and so when I saw that and I found I was good at it then I decided to devote my professional life to doing this work. Um, I have rarely seen results like I've seen with this work. And part of the reason I'm doing this work stems from frustrations that I've had and many other people have had with traditional um, therapy. A lot of times people are looking for mental health help and they can't really get the help that they need. Um, a lot of therapy is great. You go in, you talk about your feelings, somebody mirrors you, um, you get that reflection, you get to vent. But what I found was after many years, nothing was really changing in my life. And so that's why I love this work, because you really see a lot of changes. Um, all the tools that I'm going to teach you tonight are backed by scientific and psychological principles. I've also vetted all these tools myself. I am over 20 years married, so I have used this work and it has been successful. Um, so I always lay everything out. If you don't understand everything at first, it's okay. A lot of it comes from doing the work itself and experiencing it, and also from re repetition and hearing things over and over again. So what is this work? What am I talking about? What is all this? Why are we here? So when we talk about successful relationships, what we're talking about is complementary energy. And when we talk about problems in relationships, we're usually talking about things being out of balance, either in the relationship or being out of balance within ourselves. You may have noticed that we live in a universe based on duality, right? We have pain and pleasure. We have night and day. We have black and white. We have all the gradations in between. We have feminine and masculine, and all of us are both feminine and masculine. But understanding the dynamics between feminine and masculine and bringing that balance into our lives and into our relationships really is what makes them successful. And that's what was really transformational about this work. And there's a lot of misunderstanding of what feminine and masculine, also known as yin and yang, what these attributes mean and what they are. Now, oftentimes women um, energy want to be in their feminine energy in relationships, but not always, right? So just because you're feminine energy doesn't necessarily mean you're a woman. It's like 75% of the time, probably. Um, the important thing is to have balance. So I do have clients... I work with men, I work with women, I work with couples, I work with teenagers. 
Um, and some of my most happiest couples are those in which there is a masculine woman and a feminine man. So it doesn't have to be aligned with organs. Like I said, all of us are both. But we choose a hierarchy in our relationships for conflicts and awkward situations like dating. Okay, so feminine attributes. This is the right brain, okay? And this is, a lot of this is work is also derived from the experiments of Roger Sperry, who definitively proved by dissecting Newt's brains that we all have a right hemisphere of the brain, which is the feminine or yin side. And we all have a left hemisphere of our brain, which is the masculine or yang side. The yin side is passive, patient, and vulnerable. This is the world of feelings, of creativity, of artistry, of spirituality, sexuality, sensuality. Feminine energy is in the world to make it fun, but it's not necessarily of the world. And then we have the yang side, the left brain which is the logical thinking, linear thinking. This is the world of ideas, single-mindedness, competitive, conquering, controlling. Most of us are in our left brain, in our masculine side when we're at work because there's not a lot of room for feelings at work, right? We're competing, we're achieving, we're doing. Um, masculine energy is very much of the world. It's giving, it's nurturing, it's taking care of. And we all have both this masculine and feminine energy. Now, a lot of times when we have problems in relationships, again, including the relationship that we have with ourselves, it's because we've been thrown out of balance by some kind of childhood trauma. And the things that happen to us in childhood, specifically from the ages of zero to 12, um, tend to affect us more deeply than anything else that happens later in life because these occur during critical development windows. This is Freud's work. I mean, Freud basically said you're cooked by age three, but definitely by age 12. Now, he didn't believe that the brain could change itself. He pretty much thought that, well, if this stuff happened to you, you know, then you're going to be kind of messed up for the rest of your life. Now we know that the brain can change itself. And um, there's a really good book on that called, I'm going to put it in the chat, Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Deutsch. And so we now understand that we can create new patterns in the brain by taking counter actions against some of our parental injunctions. What happens in childhood if we've had any kind of trauma, whether it's trauma with a big T or trauma with a small T, we develop survival conclusions. And these are coping mechanisms that are very much of the moment, but they're not existential truths as we assume them to be. And very oftentimes we have to adapt our behavior to attach to the people who own the refrigerator so that we can survive um, at the sacrifice of our authenticity. The beauty of it is when we grow up, we are no longer dependent, right? Human, human children are very dependent, but once we become adults, we can then, you know, find food and shelter for ourselves. And so that's when we can start putting authenticity first over attachment. But a lot of us have been trained to do the opposite. And so it becomes challenging when we're making these changes. A lot of people don't understand that even change for the better creates pain. Even change um, going in in the right direction will will trigger a productive pain. And so when people start changing their lives, at first it seems really great. And then they say, oh crap, this is horrible, right? And they're in a lot of pain and you want to stop and pull back and stop making changes. Um, and that's also what I really help people with is understanding the difference between the pain of change and the pain that change needs to take place and helping people navigate that. Um, that's actually the subtitle of my second book. I've written three books on this work. I'm at work on a fourth now, which I'm really excited about. 
The first book is How to Live, Find Love, and Keep It. That's the basics of this work. It's like a manual, so you can refer to it over and over. Second book, New Ways, New Ways of Being, The Pain of Change. That really deals with once you start making the changes, as I said, navigating some of those changes and understanding what those changes mean. Because it if you keep stopping and starting with your with your life, you know, it it things just get worse. It just everything just gets harder. Um and then my third book is about marriage what secrets to a good marriage, what is love. And the fourth book that I'm working on now is called Daddy Issues, Mommy Issues. Um, in addition to doing these meetups, I already mentioned I do private sessions. I also teach this work a few times a year. Um, I probably won't be teaching until next year, but you can still sign up. Um, I put my link in here at the module packages and that's really fun. That's a small, smaller group and we get to really use these theories and workshop them um, individually in a small group confidential setting. And so um, that also is a lot of fun. We learn a lot in the private sessions, but we also learn a lot in groups because we get to learn from each other and hear each other's stories. And that's part of what I'm doing here on Meetup is building this community of people because I know if people know this work and understand this work, it can help them to live more fulfilling lives. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my favorite part, which is taking your guys' questions. Well, you can ask me anything about love, about relationships, dating. Those are my specialties, but I also help people a lot with communication. These tools, you can see the dynamics and the principles of these tools really across every area of life. And so I often take examples from science. I'll take examples from reality television. I'll take examples from... Uh, the couple sitting next to me at the table, um, when you can start understanding these dynamics, you'll start seeing these principles reflected everywhere. Um, and that can be really exciting. So yeah, and I also love to hear your guys' updates, what's happening, what's going on. Um, we, you know, it's one thing to hear this work, it's then it sinks in deeper when you do the work, and then it sinks in even deeper when you come back and share it in front of a group of people. Okay, Sophia. Yeah, I had a question about um, getting back into dating after a divorce. Um, and I'm realizing that I think I don't really know what I want. Um, do you know that, I mean, do you know how I would know to find what I want? Okay, so one of the first things that I always ask my clients is, which do you want more? Everybody wants both, but which do you want more? Do you want your feelings cherished or your thoughts respected? Because when there's an awkward situation or a conflict, we pick one so that we can find a resolution. Do you know which is more important to you? I think having my feelings respected would be Feelings yeah. cherished? Yeah. Okay. Feelings cherished. Okay. So then you're going, that's the feminine energy. So you're going to be li looking for a masculine energy person. Oh. Ah. Have you, have you started yet? Have you, um, are you going on the apps? Are you flirting in person? What are you, what are you doing to meet people? Uh, I'm going to some singles group in my area and I'm just realizing that like, the, the men out there are just like I don't know it seems like everybody in the the group that I am going to uh as a part of my my church's singles group mm -hmm. um it kind of it it kind of gives off a vibe like everybody's like desperate so like I'm not super happy about that but then again like I'm also not like hard charge and looking for anybody mm -hmm. I just figured like if there's somebody who I really hit it off with like I'll go ahead and talk to them. But most of the guys that I talk to, I think it's like a curse. Um, they're immature, insecure, and misogynistic. Oh, that's and I realized, not good. Yeah. In my, my um, marriage, um, I basically took on a mother figure to my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to do that again. Good. 
And it's so great that you are aware of that because a lot of times women find out what they want by knowing what they don't want. So you mm-hmm. don't want to be a mommy. Often I call that a Wendy, right? From Peter Pan and Wendy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't want a Peter Pan and you don't want, and you don't want to be Wendy. So you want to find a masculine man. Have you heard me talk about the five flirts before? No. Okay. So this is what I'm going to give you. This is going to be your assignment. It's great that you're going to this um, singles event at your church. That's a good place to start because a lot of times churches or temples or places of worship, you can find like-minded people, but unfortunately it's sounding like maybe there's not like-minded people there. <laughs> yeah. so you might... I'm like one of a kind. Or something. Yeah. So you might not want to keep doing that, but um, mm-hmm. basically the five flirts means you'll be flirting five days a week. Four are on the move. So that's whenever you're going to the grocery store or walking your dog or, you know, exercising, you know, going for a run on the sidewalk. If you see someone like that you like, you're going to give him or her five seconds of eye contact and a smile at the same time. That's their, that's your signal that you're open to being approached. Okay. But you're not yeah. going to approach first because you want to be in the feminine energy. You're going to do the eye, the eye contact and smile to let the other person yeah. know that you can be approached one day a week. You're going to go somewhere and plant yourself somewhere. It doesn't have to be a singles event. It can just be a spot <laughs> where so it's okay. My cat attacked my baby. Oh no. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, so one day a week you're gonna plant yourself somewhere and go somewhere that you think that you like, you know, the guys that are there, the men that are there. Um, I have clients that like to go, you know, for example, the Starbucks near the fire station is one place. Um, but you know, you can play around with it a little bit, but plant yourself for 45 minutes to an hour, go alone. And then, you know, somebody really has a better shot at approaching you because you're seated. Right. And again, you're going to give the five seconds of eye contact with the smile when you see someone you're interested in and you will meet people this way. So give that a try and let me know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a try. I write down those notes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and you guys can also ask me questions, you know, about other people's work as well. So, um, yeah, who wants to go next? Again, it can be about family situations. It can be work situations hi wendy hi chloe how are you good 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 question um i'm sure you've talked about these things before and i think we've talked about them a little bit but i guess i need to brush up because i'm not remembering yeah it takes repetition yeah how to um both chat in text you know on the date apps and also like on the phone so the problem I have oftentimes is, I know I've said this to you before, I just don't remember your response. Like guys don't necessarily follow your rules of taking <laughs> the, the lead. So right. like, we talked to this guy the other night on the phone and he just basically talked nonstop about himself. And he did ask me one question that I can remember. And um, I, I answered a little bit and then he kind of dove in back in. And I, I don't get the feeling that he's super narcissistic. I, I get the feeling he might be nervous. Yeah. A lot of times that's why I, when I, when, you know, when I tell you guys about going on dates, I always say, try three dates, give somebody three dates because they get nervous and they, and they might not be the best in their first impression. But how do I even get to the point? And like we ended the phone call with, you know, well, we'll talk again. And um, I'm, I'm not really into him so far because he just seems not mindful, which isn't the kind of person I would want to be around. But I right. want to get a chance. But yes. how do I, you know, I'm not ready to set up a date yet. I want to see more how we Okay, are. so next time he reaches out to you, 
-hmm. you know, and it's tough on text, you know, texting is, you know, it's a more masculine way to communicate. So it works more for men. I know that everybody does texting now. You can always say, and I'm glad to hear you had a phone call. You know, I feel more comfortable over the phone. Um, I give it two weeks. So I recommend, you know, if two weeks maximum, you're talking, texting, calling, whatever on the app. After that amount of time, if he hasn't asked you out, say, I've really enjoyed getting to know you on match or whatever. I've really enjoyed chatting with you and getting to know you. Um, but I feel more comfortable meeting in person. What do you think about, what do you think about, you know, grabbing coffee or whatever, you, you know, that if, if he doesn't ask you, then you can ask him what he thinks. Tell him you're more comfortable meeting in person. What does he think about that meeting in person? You can suggest coffee. You can suggest dinner, you know, whatever you want. Um, oh. Okay. But, you know, I mean, you could leave it a little open-ended so that he could then maybe take the reins once he knows you're available. The idea is letting him know that you're available, you know? So I feel more comfortable e meeting in person. What do you think? Okay, but what I'm, I thank you, but what I'm asking about is like before I'm at that point where I want to spend my time and energy meeting in person, I want to feel connected on a phone call generally. Oh, okay. Well, then say that. Say, I'm not that great at texting. I feel more comfortable talking on the phone. What do you think about chatting? You know, what do you think about giving me a call or whatever? Right. But when we're on the phone, like this guy, like, I feel like he doesn't really, I don't know how he would respond to the things I have to say because I haven't said anything because he's talking. Right. He's talking the whole time. So how do I deal with that? Um, well, you know, again, it's while you're, you don't want to meet in person. No, I don't have uh, to, right now. He's seen, I mean, he says he's into meditation, which is kind of surprising to me because he doesn't seem like a mindful person. Right. So I want to get more of a feel of, could he be more mindful, but he just talks about himself. So what do I do? Okay. So when he calls, so let's say you get to the call and he just he yeah, monologuing he and monologuing and monologuing. Okay. Well, yeah. if it goes on for more than like three phone calls where he's just monologuing, you know, then you can tell him that, you know, if you, and you decide, I mean, then you have to either, it has to move forward or it has to stop. Right. You can't just stay the same. So you either get, you're going to have to decide for yourself. Do you want to meet him in person? Then you're going to say what I said. If you don't want to meet him in person, then you're going to say, okay, well, I've enjoyed getting to know you, but I don't, I don't feel the romantic connection that I, I would think, need. And I don't want to lead yeah. you on. I think guys are waiting for me to jump in and I do occasionally, but if a guy doesn't actually ask me questions, I won't go on very long, you know, like, right. That makes sense. Okay. So you're okay. You know, I mean, you know, a lot, <laughs> excuse me. I mean, guys do go on. <clears throat> part of being in a relationship is listening to that um you know and I mean I joke about it sometimes it's almost every you know you can get a guy started going on about something and they get into rants I've actually had a lot of male clients say to me that they don't know how to stop when something like that is happening so you know you can try if you think that it's just like a runaway train because <laughs> some people don't feel really comfortable with silences right? right so if it seems like it's just a runaway train you know you can always just break it up with anything you know you could say excuse me one second i have to go to the bathroom you know and that will like stop it for a moment or you know even even what sophia who said excuse me my cat needs me or you know yeah oh it so kind of gives him a chance to calm down yeah yeah to wake up and to be derailed because sometimes it's funny. I have had a lot of men say to me, I just, I can't stop. I don't know how to get away. I can't stop talking. You no, know? even to other men. So if you can do just like, if you can just interrupt it with something neutral, okay. that might, that might shake it up a little bit. 
Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So in texting, the other thing I'm running into is, like I said, I just thrive when people ask me questions. But so like if sometimes in text, they'll just say, you know, stuff about them. But they won't end with a question like, you know, tell me about this about you. And then mm -hmm. I... And that will happen like a number of times. And so I, I think maybe they're waiting for me to give my number or something. But I don't. Do you I say can't... anything in response? Yeah, I have to, you know. Yeah, you have to say, oh, interesting. Or, you know, <laughs> praise their deeds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. And, okay. and then I share something about myself. But I really look for someone who asks about me. And I, I think maybe they have. A different understanding about the way it's supposed to go like well a girl will will volunteer stuff about herself when she wants I don't want to well again I think it's hard with the texting you know because you can't you know words and and are only like one element of communication you can't see body language you can't see you know gestures or tones of voice there's nothing yeah. in a text and so that's why I do recommend getting off the text at least doing a phone call a zoom meeting in person um, you know, I really do recommend meeting in person, you know, even if it's just for a coffee or just a brief meeting, yeah, it's just, it's just easier to get to know somebody in person. Do you think they could be really different in person than the way they are? Yes. Yes. I mean, some people are just really bad at texting, you know, and I've, I've had male clients literally be texting the op and saying the opposite of what they mean just because they get rattled or confused so um that's again why i'd say the three dates and again you know if that starts happening you know you can ask for clarity because sometimes everybody just starts getting confused you know what i'm saying yeah the nerves can really like do a number on people yeah um okay all right thank you okay try that and let me know how it goes okay thanks wendy thank you. thanks for sharing okay who's next no questions again you guys can really ask about anything um brett there he is. Hi, Brett. Hey, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? How's everything going? Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have a, like a polar opposite perspective of uh, not in a bad way, polar opposite, but kind of other end of the spectrum of what uh, Wendy was describing about um, in-person versus texting in a situation where the everything in person goes great but by text it fizzles well that's what she was that is what she was saying is that by texting there's all this confusion you know right 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 and and uh so you know and yeah i it you know the but but the i'll in-person interactions meeting first in person but then nothing seems to happen by text <laughs> oh okay right yeah yeah I mean, and sometimes people don't like texting you know and some people are better with words i've also had clients have the opposite experience you know where they're they're like i don't know on text he was so talkative we met in person it was like he didn't say anything you know Okay. I guess I've had that experience as well. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, where, where things worked out great online and everything. And yeah. Um, it's so, yeah, I just kind of want to make that comment, but, um, I, uh, um, one of the things I'm kind of struggling with now or reflecting on, which is a better word than struggling, but just kind of like, huh, observing the world and, you know, um, having had a trajectory of life and watching how life is changing, right? Like how the world is changing, right? And how people and the way that they interact are, is changing. And, and, um,
it almost seems that in today's world that things are flipped on its head in terms of the yin and yang. That men that are very yang don't, you know, seem to come across as maybe overbearing or maybe creepy or maybe, you know, even worse predatory. Um, and, and, you know, so men are having to, you know, lay back. Right. Right. More talked receptive. about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Be more you passive. especially have talked about that a lot. You and Lee. Right. So, you know, I know what you're talking about is the backlash from the Me Too movement. And, you know, it started before Me Too. OK. Yeah. No, I mean, that's part of, you know, that's what it is to live in a dystonic environment. And so we do have right now in society a lot of very masculine women and a lot of very feminine men. And there is a lot of dystonia and confusion about what people are supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be getting along, how they're supposed to be communicating. It's not like these things are taught in school. That's why I love this work so much is because it gives you a rubric to follow. And yeah. oftentimes just you following that rubric will encourage your potential partner to jump on board, you know. Potentially, yes. And 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 so then you have to kind of wade through a lot of people to kind of like to get there. Cause the other kind of like not like that's kind of a that that like extreme dystonic style of relating is there. And I've got some wildly humorous examples of it, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, you know, then there's the other part of it that is a little bit like. So. The feminine shows receptivity, the masculine approaches. And so part of the dystonic reality that I that and, and I've had some experiences recently that really, really, really highlighted this is that the level of signals that a woman has to show is elevated. Yeah. And 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 so it's not just a smile anymore. It's not just a, you know, and and, and and what that means also is that the level of pursuit that you have to put in is just like, oh, my God, through the roof. And then you never know if people are just like, in, in fact, nine times out of ten or worse, it's just attention. You know, like uh, um, people just kind of are, are enjoying the attention, enjoying the interaction. Um and uh you know so it's kind of a it's it's a it's a difficult world at, at this point to navigate and i'm hearing people like wendy explaining their difficulties in navigating this and i'm sort of like experiencing from the other side of the perspective some of those difficulties things are just not what they once were <laughs> You yeah, know, I mean, and every and, period of time has, you know, right, their positives and negatives. I mean, right now we are in, I do think this is, you know, I haven't lived in another period of time consciously. So you uh, have or have not? I, I have not. That. I mean, I'm only, okay. you know, I've only lived in this time period, you know, I mean, I, I believe in reincarnation, but, you know, I don't necessarily have access to that. But, um, but I mean, by, by time period, I mean, like, it seems that this trend started in the early 2000s. And I think you were alive before the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I would say even before that. I mean, OK, you know, what happened was women got the women started coming into the workforce. That was a great thing. We wanted to work. We wanted to get paid equally. But feminism is largely an economic movement, right? It's not necessarily a psychological movement. It didn't mean that we didn't need men anymore. It didn't mean that we had to wear the pants. I mean, a lot of the response to some of the things that have happened to women when they were vulnerable has been, okay, well, I'll just become really strong so that I don't need a woman, right? That's like kind of that boss bitch, girl boss. Um, so they don't need a man, you mean? Not the right, sorry. Yeah, that, we, yeah, that I don't need men anymore. And that has left a lot of people unhappy because we do need each other. 
And a lot of really high achieving women still do want to be feminine in their relationships. And so there's just been a lot of confusion. I do think that we are at a, at a, at a high, at, at a height of confusion. I mean, definitely in my lifetime, um, <clears throat> I have a lot of, you know, I've never had as many male clients actually, as I do now. And I've never seen as many men doing this work. Um, even when I was a student of Dr. Pat's. I'm glad to hear you say that yeah. because I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just seeing, and, and no matter where you look, whether it's in the reels or Reddit or like, I, I'm just kind of in a point where I'm kind of putting my finger on the pulse of that stuff. And it seems like there's almost a, it's not a feminist movement. It's a menomist movement. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's had <laughs> this does other that make sense? Like where there's now there's like meninist. Hell. Stop yeah. treating us like crap. Just because we have male genitals does not mean we are horrible human beings and to be right. discarded well, and disregarded. And okay. Just, yeah. Does that make sense? And you it know, does. It does. You, and, you but, know, but, and a so lot that, of men are not happy about that. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. You don't need to read that stuff. You don't need to buy into that. I mean, the, that's the thing about social media is like it runs on negativity. Yeah, but I've but even I was been getting thinking... to, a, to a different point, and like to, to sort of like I'm I'm just talking about that the, there's there's this like so to to deescalate from that, right? Is this business of like well, bloody hell, how much effort do I have to invest in texting? Well, okay. how much effort I'm do I gonna... have to invest in talking? How much? You know, in terms of like, um, you know, am I being led on? And because everything's so confused. I now, know, I know, you guys. You see where I'm heading that. with that. But some of you that see where I'm heading is, with that. Yes, and this is not a new point. I hear you bringing this up a lot. Some of this is the cost of doing business. You know, this is what it takes. You got to put your effort in. You got to put yourself out there. You got to ask her out. You know, that is the masculine role. And, right. And so you last know, when time I work you... with teenagers, I'm always like, you know, I, I really encourage the, the boys to ask the girls that they like out, you know, like do it. If she says no, then she says, no, you move on, but you have to desensitize to a certain amount of rejection. Yes. But I, I, I think you may be like really missing the point here that, that it's, it's not about like, Oh my God. Like uh, if, if you're a guy by the age of 15 and you haven't learned to handle rejection, I mean, you know, what it really is about though, is, is that the old, that old thinking just doesn't seem to work anymore. And, and you're, you're in a situation quite often where you're getting all the like quintessential signals. I mean, we just talked a couple of weeks ago, I think, and you were like, no, ask her out, put her out of her misery and everything. And so I did kind of like do a for the fourth time, you know, and, and got a lukewarm response yet in person, all the classic, I'm just like, okay. Did you ask you know, her out in person? Oh, I did. Chloe, I had done that. Yeah, in person by text. Does that make sense? Like it, and and kind of another that that's what I mean about like it's like the world is becoming wishy washy. So it's really kind of like, well, I, and I get what you're saying. Like you know, stop being wishy washy yourself. But if but if you you know if you're not wishy washy and you're and you're getting wishy washy responses, you just have to just like let it go and and not keep you have a specific situation that you're ha having yeah 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 okay, last, last I, I, the, the couple of weeks ago like we talked about and i was saying that there was this woman that i had met that had been giving out all the classic signals right of like so you asked her out and she said and, what uh given a wishy-washy response what it was it um interminable like hmm, okay well i'll think about it or yeah no that sounds interesting did you ask um, for a specific date and time yep yeah okay. yeah 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 okay. and so that, that, that's why i'm saying it's it's not really it's not really so cut and dry as... well no you got to move on that's you yeah, know. yeah 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 there the you no go answer... there you go oh 
no answer or the absence of an answer is a negative or a wishy-washy yeah. answer kind of a yeah 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 and <laughs> and it seems to be that um you know that it it there was a time even 10 years ago where you could get a yes or no you it's could not- get a clear social signals or lack of clear social and now everything is like Oh, I'm going to put out the vibes. I'm going to, you know, and, 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 and then when push comes to shove. No, disagree. I don't think you can extrapolate all that. You know, it, this is one situation or two situations. You got some signals. This is happening all the time because a lot of women, you know, men don't like to hear this, but a lot of women have been trained to reel in as many guys as possible. And then once they ask you out, that's when you make the decision. There I don't go. Think- I think you I think you hit the nail on the head. But- <laughs> there, there you go. I didn't want to say it about the about the leading on and 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 reeling guys into the friend zone or or what have you, you know. And it it gets it it's so, so also understand that that training ends up being training. And I that was not a purposeful rhyme, but that that training ends up being training on guys then guys end up getting trained like okay here we go again I, am i just being let on again am i just talk about that before and and people were like that's why women hate women and that's why no matter why right <laughs> that's why what did you say <laughs> i said people make comments like that's why men hate women and it will never work um but, you know, the human race carries on and people do find each other. So I understand that that's a frustrating aspect. I totally get it. Um, but, you know, just try not to focus too much on that and just do your thing, you know? Oh, OK. So so no, no, no answer in terms of the, the yin and yang dynamics and how that's all become dystonic. Just just uh, don't worry about it. and. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, because because sort of what I'm describing is a, is a situation of the dystonic situation, and 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 so just don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, that's just something you know. It's like <laughs> going to be upset because there's potholes in the road, or are you going to drive around them? Yeah, I think that's precisely what I was driving at: is the driving around them. Right. It's exhausting. And, and, and um yeah you know and and also especially um yeah i i that that is exactly okay. it i think people like you know end up getting exhausted and you know um well, especially you, you know I- not knowing where the roles are anymore and not not you know just um it's like men are supposed to take the active role but you know when that's in an environment where you never know if taking that active role is going to like you know that doesn't matter you got to do the right thing anyway does matter chloe i'm so sorry but it really does because if you then you 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 risk investing. You risk making a fool. You risk sticking your foot in it. You ri- there is so much downside that. to to doing that. And and um, yeah, I, you know I um, so so in essence, you know what I'm what I'm hearing from all of this is that we've got an acknowledgement of a dystonic world, um, and yet just um don't worry about the dystonic or or yes worry about the dystonic i'm i I guess i'm a little confused about that worrying in general doesn't really do anything these tools okay so replace the replace the phrase with um at least you can acknowledge with um with um think positively about the future then at least you can acknowledge that you don't know what will happen right You've lived on this planet long enough to know that you can't predict the future. And that we as humans don't have control over everything. All we can do is make our move. 
All we can do is act in our own integrity. All we can do is go after what we want. And then we have to let the chips fall where they may. You use these tools, you use this language. This is part of the building blocks to establishing a healthier communication. So where in your answer is the respect for the thought that I just put forth? That Yang is getting tired. Right. <laughs> okay. And, and and so we've been talking, talking, talking. Where's the respect for the what I've just said of Yang being tired? Where's the acknowledgement of that? Where, Chloe? From me or from your in your world? You. Oh, right now, because I'm talking to you right now. And so, and and so instead of instead of acknowledging that that's a real true blue issue, you've consistently said that, well, just don't worry about it. It's like, well, wait a second, huh? I haven't not acknowledged it. I have acknowledged. Well, where's the well, where's the where's the answer to in, 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 that that is something a step beyond? Well, just don't worry about it. I mean, come on. The if am- Yang is tired it's and li- Yang is burnt out. Um, yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, okay, Brett, we seem to be going in circles and you sound really frustrated and you sound kind of emotional, which is fine. But I don't think I can give you an answer at this time that will make you happy because I've already been giving you answers and you're not hearing me. So that's okay. I'm going to give you a little break right now because some other people have questions. You know, I think if you listen back to the recording, maybe you will hear what you're looking for. I understand you want your feelings cherished in this moment, but you have told me that you want to be in the masculine role. I so I am not feelings. going I to said thoughts in this respected. moment. I am I respecting your thoughts and I am have responded. I really, I honestly can't say more or explain it more or differently than I have. So I'm going to give you a little break and then maybe sometimes it takes time for some things to sink in okay Sophia yeah I had questions about um masculine energy um I was thinking about like a typical example would be like a masculine man would never want me to like pay his bills but do you know any like um less obvious examples of what a feminine versus a masculine man would look like okay so in general when we talk about masculine and feminine what we're talking about are these values right that i described so we're looking at if i'm in the feminine in the relationship then i'm going to be respecting the man's thoughts right? And letting him do things. The feminine is more receiving. And it does take a little finesse and a little bit of practice. Um, But, you know, it doesn't mean necessarily that you could never pay a man's bills. But if you are paying a man's bills, that is technically the masculine role, right? Because you are doing something for someone, you're taking care of someone that is yang activity. Okay. Um, so are you asking like, okay, so what are the other, the other things that you have to watch out for is in general, over giving to men. And there's a bunch of these things in my book, um, how to live, find love and keep it, which has a lot of the diff, the masculine and feminine stuff laid out and some of the common pitfalls, right. That women fall into, um, so overgiving, um, you don't want to be cherishing his feelings too much. Um, you know, don't ask him how he's feeling unless he's puking or bleeding. There's a good rule to follow. Um, you want to um, 
be asking him about his ideas. You want to be asking him um, about his deeds. You don't want to um, be asking him, for example, is he mad at you? That's something that a lot of women fall into. Um, does that make sense? Oops. Yeah, I think that um, kind of makes sense. Um, uh, man, I just lost a question that I was thinking about. You know, oh, it's, so, uh, yeah. um, so like I've always thought of like women as being like the ones to like take care of and like a masculine energy is like providing but nurturing. That kind of surprises me that masculine energy is nurturing um could you um help me know the difference of um those two uh, I, i'm getting confused again <laughs> Sorry. you're saying so a lot of people get confused because when you say giving taking care of nurturing you're like but wait a mom does that and that's a yeah. role but no when you're being a mom you're in your masculine that's a job you're taking care of someone, you're giving to them, you are advocating for them. You know, if you're, if you're a mom, you, that is, you're being a man, right? So you, yeah. and you expressed it earlier, you don't want to be a mom, you don't want to be masculine to your next man in your life, right? Yeah. So that's you save for your child, that's you save for your work. Yeah. I definitely don't want to be somebody's mother again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> not a grown ups, maybe a baby, but not, <laughs> mm -hmm. but not a grown ups mother. Yeah. And, you know, women are super capable and we can do it. We can, you know, we have a lot of skills and we can do it all, but we just don't want to do it all. And certainly not at once. And so a lot of women, in your position often find, you know, it's difficult to receive. So for example, if he tries to, you know, we don't ask for more, better, or different love from our partner. You know, if he gives you something, receive it, try not to criticize it. Try not to tell him what he's doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Kiara. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, I'm doing okay. I had a question about, I remember um, you stating that when you're meeting out, meeting people out in the public, you stated for a woman who's seeking like a masculine man, saying hi first is masculine energy, correct? Um, correct? I mean, he who speaks first is masculine. It's okay. not- Okay. So it's not like you know a complete deal breaker but you just right. have, you know if if you do it if it happens whatever it's not a huge deal but it's just like you don't want to be tasked with carrying the conversation and being responsible for all that you know okay because my main like socialization right now um is the dog park mm -hmm. and i feel kind of like i know you said the words with the smiling and stuff but I feel kind of awkward doing that would it be a stretch just to would it be masculine to ask someone that maybe you think is attractive like, oh what kind of dog is that is that still masculine um what the what you can do is ask somebody for help okay so how could I do that in advice. the dog park or advice okay you know or okay you know like oh um where did you get that leash you know <laughs> oh okay yeah you teach your dog yeah. to do that or um what breed is Smart. that yeah you know just so that so that the man has an opportunity to offer his wisdom or help okay that's kind of okay. like a caveat okay all right, right cool i appreciate yeah that's literally probably my only like true socialization i'm meeting a lot of people that i find like you know cool at the dog park you know but sometimes i you know see people else oh, he looks you know he's cute whatever but i i I never like approaching men anyways i like i don't i personally am not in that energy 
to approach a man and be like, hey, this is, hey, I'm, you know, so-and-so, and let, if I'm interested, I mean. But um, I always wondering, and the other day, I, um, a guy waved at me, and I was so mad because my dad, <laughs> he was coming to the park the one time that happened, and he came like two minutes, he came like two minutes later, and I was like, ah, so awkward, like, <laughs> missed my opportunity. <laughs> um, you but, know, um, so like, you know, I've had clients take a small fall, right? Around, a man. <laughs> you know, you could get a splinter and need help with that, you know? Right. Nice. I do. I am about to take an acting class too in a few weeks. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> might be on time. Uh, but yeah, and that's another question. I mean, when I start my acting class, like, um, you know, I want to say there's like a guy in there what would be the approach to meeting or what it just, I mean, it'd be something that we're with the same people for a few weeks. Um, so what could be the approach to meeting? If I find someone attractive, is it literally just waiting and just seeing if they approach me or. Well, obviously the eye contact and the smile, right. Mm -hmm. That shows that you're available. That shows that you're open um listening to him laughing at his jokes asking about his ideas you know in the context that I told you like you know oh do you have an idea about that or asking for help right so those are all good things obviously you can do stuff you know with body language and tones of voice gestures I mean eye contact can be really intense right and really sexy yeah yeah so, you know, that's why I, I always start with that. But, um, you know, seat yourself next to him, um, you know, have that accidental, um, you know, physical touch, you know, brush your leg against his or your arm, or, <laughs> you know, um, y- you know, even exposing, you'll be in the acting class, so this will probably happen anyways but even exposing some kind of vulnerability right to Mm -hmm. and um if he's interested then he'll pick up on that he'll see that as an opportunity right right and i think that's the key too it just is is what it is like you know either they're interested or they're not you know right i Um, mean exactly you can't control other people all you can do is make your take your actions and then see where the chips fall that's the point. I think that's that. what you were saying earlier too. It's like it's it can be frustrating, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like that's the game. You kind of just have to like put yourself out there, and you just see what happens. Yeah, and, you that, know, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. And people are get frustrated, and they're like, "Oh, why is it so hard?" And, well, you have to have yeah. to work against, right? That's why we're down here. We're trying to heal. We're trying to awaken. We're trying to evolve. You have to have something to work against. If everybody's interested in going out with you, then, you know, what are we doing here? This is like paradise. Yeah. That's not what life yeah. on earth is like. So, yeah. no, I get frustrated too. I don't like it either. You know, I don't yeah. like the rules, but I do understand how to navigate them, you know, and sometimes right. you take a break, but then, you know, you come back, you come back swinging and you learn something or, you, you know, you get deeper. I mean, all all relationships really do come back to the relationship with yourself so the quote work isn't really for not and really what i was trying to get through to him was that yeah yeah he, and other yeah, and i think when you get so frustrated in the game you shot you blame the player and not the game the game is just the game. exactly and a lot you know and a lot of it is look a lot of men they don't like it they don't want to put themselves out there they get sick of it i understand yeah. i get it that's the downside you get the control, yeah. but then you have to deal with the rejection so yeah. i mean i do i dealt with it i was at trader joe's and i tried to smile at a guy and then his girlfriend walked up and i was like oh this is awkward though <laughs> but that was <laughs> like Still practice rejection. You practiced it and you did what you was genuine to you, which was authentic to you. And so you yeah. always get benefit from that. You understand? Yeah. Exactly. No. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay.
yeah, let me know how it goes at the dog park. <laughs> okay, Sophia, last last little question here. Um, is there like some sort of like cheat code that I can use to repel the feminine men? It seems like for whatever reason, I I attract men that want to to make me be windy. Right. Okay. So you've been in that pattern for a while. So it's going to take a minute for you to change your energy. You're going to change your energy by doing some of the things that I've told you. You're not, a, you're probably attracting all kinds of men, but you're, these kinds of men are familiar to you. So they're easy to see. You know what I'm saying? So you, you don't need to do much to repel them. You know, if they ask, if they ask you for help, you say, I can't help you. You know, I had a guy once, do you know anything about massage? No, nothing. You know, <laughs> can I ask you for directions? Nope. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Women own the word no. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks you guys for coming. I will be here next week. I will put my credentials in here again. If you guys need to reach out to me in the meantime, you can um, either on Instagram or through my website. Um, as you guys know, I do private sessions. So you can find me there. Um, if you have a quick question, I'll try to answer it. If it's longer then you know, we can set something up for longer. Um, but if I don't hear from you, I will see you next week. Have a good night.